Hey, it's Corey Russell. And Billy Humphrey. And this is Gripped, Awakening in the Grown in a Generation for Revival and the Return of the Lord. Episode 10. Come on! Season 4. Here we are at the end. It's been an amazing season. Yes. The Lord has met us. We've spent a ton of time in Psalm 2. Yes. We, we, we've talked about intercession. We've talked about watchmen. Yeah. We've talked about shifting and what's happening in the earth. Reformation. <laughs> yeah. And we always love to uh, take the last one. And I, and I know there's tons of questions that you're probably having after listening to all these episodes. And you're like saying, where do I even start? What do I do? <laughs> we love to take the last one and get a little bit more practical with you. Yeah. Maybe even based on the last episode where Billy was laying out the shift in the Reformation that we're in from a synagogue, once a week, just teaching kind of uh, format into tabernacle, communities built around the presence, yes. ministry to God and worship. And you might be saying, man, I, I love this. I'm, I'm, I'm with you guys in this, but I go to, I'm part of a local congregation. They're just not there yet. They're not thinking this way. What do I do? What yeah. would you say to these kind of guys? Well, number one, I would say you got to honor the authority that God's placed you under. Amen. Like, that Amen. thing where people get negative about their pastor and leader, that is witchcraft. That is unhelpful. Absolutely. Unhealthy. You're not. That's counsel of the ungodly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that is, you're not God's appointed prophet to rebuke your pastor. That is not, <laughs> that is no. not the plan. So I would say this, that. In your church, there are definitely environments of worship. There are definitely environments of prayer. And those environments are the environments that right now you have that are tabernacle yes, style. Yes, yes. And so give yourself to those environments. And you may say, well, it's it's not that good. Well, that's okay. Yes. I, you know, every prayer meeting I've ever been to hasn't been that good either. Absolutely. Like I've had, I've been through 1 million prayer meetings probably and Probably 990,000 of them have been not so great. Yeah. But here's the point. It's about posturing your heart before the Lord in those environments and asking for more. Yes. Engaging with zeal and tenderness and saying, God, give us more. So whether it's the prayer meeting that happens on Tuesday evenings or Friday mornings, or it's the worship environment on Sundays, you know, for 30 minutes before the preaching, those are the moments for you to engage your heart, to draw on heaven. And who's to say you might be able to start another worship and prayer environment and if, if pastor and the leadership Wants that, you could say, hey, look, we've got three or four people. We'd like to do a prayer meeting on Thursday afternoons yeah. or whenever, Friday mornings. Yeah. And you can create those environments of worship that's tabernacle style and give your heart to it and allow the Lord to create momentum with, with your offering, with your heart in that place. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I would just echo all of that. And I want to now take a, here we are, we've spent this whole season on in times and intercession. Yeah. And we, we've looked at a lot of, we looked at Psalm 1 and Psalm 2 a ton. We walk through that. And now we want to get practical. What does it look like? Okay. What does it look like tomorrow morning as you begin to, I, I would just say a lot of similarities between every season. There are going to be a lot of similar practicals that we do. Yes. It's really not that complicated. It's really opening your Bible and going on a journey. And this is something that I've loved doing. I'm doing my third round with this with some with our students in, in Dallas. But I'm all about going through the Bible. I'm falling in love with the biblical storyline. Yes, yes. And seeing the story and the covenants God made with Abraham, Moses, David, the new covenant secured in Jesus, his coming and all of that. I would say get a Bible reading plan. Get yeah. a Bible reading plan and begin to show up for it. Yes. I, I, when I think about reading the Bible, I think about width and I think about depth. And I think about, I love to know the story, know the narrative, but yet when the Holy Spirit breathes on certain truths mm -hmm. or passages and they hit me, I will then put the Bible yeah. down and I'll turn it into dialogue and meditate around yeah. it. Yeah, I think the point you're driving at too is, it starts with obviously the word, but your schedule. Mm. And you know, I, I mean, I just have this conversation yes, yes. so often in, in people that are even in our environments that are worship and prayer centered environments with an emphasis on the scripture. And I'll and they'll say, well, I'm, I'm wrestling with this and that. I'll go, tell me how you're spending your time and tell me what time you go to bed. This is big. Man. And tell me what time you wake up and let me see your schedule. 
and and most of the time people don't have a schedule no and this was something i had to learn in my 30s honestly that i can't just go to sleep whenever and wake up whenever and imagine that somehow i'm going to become the man that i believe god wants me to be yes yes i had to realize oh i literally have to set a time that i go to bed a time that i wake up I need to set a schedule for how I spend my time during the day. Yes. And and some of you have a job that you might work 40, 50, maybe 60 hours a week. I understand that. That's very challenging. But at the end of the day, there's these trade-offs we're making all the time. We're actually trading time for something we want. Yes. If we want camaraderie with friends, I'm giving time so I can get camaraderie with friends. Yes. If I want to watch a football game, I'm giving time yes. so I can watch football. If you want depth and richness in the word, you have to say, okay, at the beginning of the week, I'm going to give this much time to go after depth and richness in the word. And so I say, set a time, set a place, and make that an appointment in your schedule. It's something you've taught for years. Yes. That is like gold. Yes. If you can lock into a scheduled time that you're going to be with the Lord in prayer and in the word and really don't like, like don't let other stuff get in the way. Don't allow, Oh bro, I got to be with you, man. Can you show and, and you, hey, How about, how about 8 a.m. tomorrow? And you go, uh, okay. And 8 a.m. is supposed to be your time with the Lord. You, you got to say a hard no. Oh man, I can't do 8 a.m. I love you. How about nine or whatever yes. the time is yes. that you're available? You've got to say those hard no's. And what I've found over the years is if I will be disciplined with my schedule, I will grow in God in ways that there's no way I could get there. I couldn't get the richness in the word on the run. Absolutely. Not. You know, listening to the podcast, I, I couldn't get it <laughs> if I don't if I don't actually dig in myself. And what we're doing here, we want to encourage you, exhort you. We want to spur you on. But it's so that you will take what you're hearing here and go deep in the word and in prayer on your own. So, I, man, I just, I can't get over starting with a schedule. It's critical, man. I believe so many holiness issues are actually time management issues. Wow. They are so deeply connected. You have no idea. I've seen... Friends that have struggled, you know, sexual sins, maybe seeing porn or different things like that. And I said, how's your schedule? Which will thereby, how's your life in the word? I have watched the Lord break in time and time again when schedules get dealt with. I found the majority, yes. and I would encourage young yes. people, start going to bed by 10. Yeah. And start waking up by 5.30. <laughs> I know this sounds crazy. It sounds archaic. <laughs> Most of the stuff you repent for happens after 10 o'clock. That's exactly right. Most of the stuff that you spend the majority of the morning's quiet time is, God, I was tired and my guard was down. And I was watching something, scrolling something, being involved in something that I should have been asleep earlier about. So true. If you put a demand on your night by waking up in the morning, it will change your life. And and I, I'll give you even a little more grace, a little more mercy. <laughs> 11. <laughs> Corey's got you over here in the 60-year-old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's a little bit more cutting edge than I am. <laughs> I, I'm just so liberal. <laughs> Go to bed by 11. But here's the, here's the point. Put a demand on your nighttime by getting up early. And so tomorrow morning, set your alarm for 6 a.m., and guess what? By by 11 o'clock tomorrow night, you're going to be tired. You're going to be looking for the bed. It's, it's as simple as that. And then you don't waste those three hours after 11. Because let me just ask you, like, really think about it. Between 11 and 2 a.m., which most 20 to you know 30-year-olds, they're just goofing around. 18-year-old, I know you're out there watching this. What are you actually doing between 11 and 2 how is that growing you in God? How is that causing you to become the dream that you have that's, that's right. stirred in you through the stuff you're hearing us talk about? How is what you're doing between 11 and 2 compelling you into what we're talking about, having a burning heart of intimacy and intercession with God, standing firm at the end of the age? 
I guarantee you, your 11 to 2 a.m. hours uh, are absolutely uh, not serving you as it relates to becoming one of these watchmen, these forerunner messengers are standing firm for the Lord at the end of the age. Now, if you're in the night watch, we bless that. Go with it. Go for that. But don't tell me you're in the night watch because <laughs> yeah. you're staying up till two on YouTube videos yes, or yes. watching movies or hanging out. And then, and then to say, I don't have enough time to get with the Lord. That's just not legit. Like seriously, just repent of that. We think that's, you know, just it's repentable. Just repent. It's easy to change. Like we think you can just shift that tomorrow. And now put a demand on your morn on your night by getting up early in the morning and seeking the Lord. And I and I want to give you so it starts with a schedule. Number two is a value system of the understanding of the the showing up and consistency. Yeah. If you find a set time, so I'm real big. I mean, you find your power time for me. It's early in the morning. I find that my mind's slower, which makes me easier to receive, yes. to connect with God before my mind gets busy with all my to-do <sighs> list so of things I need to do today. I like to consecrate the first couple of hours every day. So you're like, I got an hour, whatever. I got 45 minutes, whatever. It's not about the time. It's about consecrating a, a block of time to be a receiver, yes. to receive, to make eye contact with him, to read the word and to whisper phrases to him, to align your heart. Yes. And then to understand that Monday turns into Tuesday, into Wednesday and every day. And see, this is the power of the beholding becoming. So true. Second Corinthians 3, 18, we beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. And yes. some of your translation says dimly. Yes. You know, we are being transformed into the same image yes. from glory to glory. Yes. Mirrors in the ancient world weren't that perfect reflection. Shined up piece of metal. Exactly. They were little bits. And Paul was saying, though, I want you to understand every time you open the Bible, close your eyes, whisper phrases and pray, you are transformed. Yes. You may not feel it in the moment. You may not sense this ecstatic explosion of the glory yeah. of God. But I want you to know something, friend, and I'm speaking to you. Every time you open the Bible and look at God, you're changed. Yes. Something changes every time. And this is the journey you need to value into because we're a generation that wants to get the explosion at the conference. We love the YouTube explosion. We love this. But when we get into the power of mundane consistency, we don't have value because we don't see the immediate fruit. Yes. But the kingdom of God is the slow, steady growth yes. that happens when you wake up weeks, months, years later, and you feel different, you think different, you perceive reality different. Yes. And I want to see a generation get into that. Yes. I mean, here's the thing. Like you look at a Corey Russell and you see him at a conference and you see him up there releasing a word and people's hearts are burning and people are running to an altar and they're getting touched by God. And you see this fire encounter, this moment of glory. And all you're getting to see is an hour and a half. And what you don't realize is that what was released through Corey in that moment in that conference was plowed in a secret place in a really boring, probably prayer yes. meeting, five and six hours a day for the last 25 years. I mean, what are we in? You're 25 years in now? 22. 22 years in. And, and everybody wants to be, I'm going to be the guy blowing him up on the platform. I really appreciate that. There's a there's a desire in your yes. heart for legacy and for impact, and that's awesome yes. stuff. Yes, but that does not come by getting it on the run. That doesn't come by being you know frivolous with your schedule. It comes by being faithful in the secret place over time, and just literally showing up day in and day out when you feel like it, when you don't feel like it, when the music's good, when the music's not good, when the coffee's happening and when it's not <laughs> just showing up, presenting your cold heart before the Lord and allowing him again to breathe on you with revelation, to breathe on you with light. What you see manifest in Corey in those moments has been paid for. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which over joy over it, the man goes and sells all that he has and he buys that field. And that's what it's about is it's the it's intentional about. 
seeking of the treasure. And guys, if I prayed when I felt like it, I might do it two times a month. I mean, seriously. If I really was waiting on the emotional rush to get me excited to get there, maybe twice a month. Yeah. Which means this, there's something bigger than what I'm feeling in the moment. It's I've connected to a truth. Yes. There is truth that even transcends the emotions of today, the circumstances of the day, the pressures of today, all the difficulties that are going on in my life. I have an appointment with God. And unless I make eye contact with him, everything is out of alignment. Yes, yes, I don't even, yes, I yes. can't even, when you build a life, a root system like this, you can't function outside of first receiving his words over your life. Yes. Because when you do and you build a life of receiving his words and they become the loudest, then you're not as shaken by people's disapproval. Yes. Or you're not that excited about people's approval. Yeah, that's right. Which means because you have the reward on the inside and you yes. can only get that in the slow, mundane, consistent life of prayer. Absolutely. You know, I'm sitting here thinking about it and and what we're telling you is not exciting. <laughs> it's like very grindy. Yes. And 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 it is it doesn't show up like in conferences. No. It shows up in the secret place that's like really not that exciting, but if if you will commit Jesus. to living this way, it will change your life. life. And here's the thing that I want to ask you. What is the desire of your heart? That's it. What do you see on the inside? What do you want to be? What do you want? What do you want in God? What do you want your heart to be like? What's compelling you from deep down? And whatever that desire is down in there, the real thing that God put in you to, to, to make an impact, to, to know you're loved, to, to, to leave a legacy, for beauty and wonder, whatever those desires, the longings of your heart are, I want you to get in touch with that. And then I want to ask you, what would it make you feel like if you were able to see yourself fulfilling those desires? What if you became Hello, that Hello, confident Hello. lover of God that you so Hello, long Hello, to be? Hello. What would that feel like on the inside? You'd be filled with glory. You'd feel glory. You'd feel wonder. You'd feel beauty. And here's all I want to ask you. Based on your desire, what choices do you need to make to see that desire fulfilled in your life? It's really yeah, about so making the more. simple choices that yeah, are compelled so by longing, more. compelled by desire. So yeah, it's yeah, in so the more. word, it's in prayer, yes. it's meditating, it's saying no to lesser things, lesser attractions, yes. some stuff that's frivolous, some stuff that's sinful. If there's a sin habit that you have, you've got to go and confess it to a spiritual leader yes. right now. Repent, get it out of your life, get it cleansed. You can get set free. I don't care how bound you've been. Yes. There is no bondage that's more powerful than the blood of Jesus. Jesus, Amen. walk this out day in, day out. Let the desire and the longing that's on the inside of your heart compel you to make a good choice tomorrow and then the next day and the next day. And I'm telling you, don't look up. Don't look up for 12 months. Don't even assess the change. That's right. Don't even consider, is this working? Every day in the word, every day in prayer, after a year, then look back and say, Lord, how have you been moving in my life? And I tell you, your life will be transformed. You will watch yourself begin to shift and change and grow in ways that you cannot get any other way. It doesn't come from somebody laying their hand on your head. It comes from God laying his hand on your heart. And that only happens in a place of disciplined connection with God through his word and with the Holy Spirit through intimacy and prayer. So it's a schedule showing up, opening your Bible. And friend, I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit. Yes. Friend, you have, you have the third person of the Trinity living on the inside of you. You have an ever-present help in time of trouble. 
You have a burning river on the inside of you. The Lord you have Shekinah glory dwelling on the inside of you. He is your helper. He is the one that guides you into all truth. He's the one that leads you. He's the one that strengthens you. And friend, I want you to begin to cultivate a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit. You're like, how do you do that? Talk to him. Yes. Literally put your hand on your belly. Look at him with the eyes of faith and talk to him. Whisper phrases like, I love you. I love you. Holy Spirit. I need you, Holy Spirit. You are beautiful, Holy Spirit. And begin to cultivate an intentional life of drawing near to the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Yes. Praying in your prayer language. Praying in tongues. And building a reservoir and a life of extended times of tongues. Most of us only pray in the Spirit when you feel God at the conference. Mm. I want you to get a vision. Push yourself 10 minutes. I want to work a muscle. Many of our spirits are very weak. Mm. We haven't cultivated our inner man. Mm. We, we go by what we feel and our spirits get weak. They're malnourished. Praying in the spirit builds, your, builds you up in your most yes. holy faith. Yes. It strengthens you with might. Yes. It builds you. Praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit is how you access that realm of revelation, the spirit of prayer, the spirit of prophecy, spirit of might, spirit of glory. He begins to rise up on the inside of you. And I want to tell you, it's the power of that consistently. Throw in some fasting. Friend, you throw in some fasting. Say, I'm going to take a lunch a week. I'm going to take a day a week. Yeah. And I'm going to consistently show up on Tuesdays. Or I'm going to show up on Wednesdays. I'm going to skip some meals. And I'm going to go in on God. You do those kinds of things for a year. You will look back and you will find. It's not that you've earned it. What you've done is you've honored it. Yes. You haven't earned it. You've honored it by making room in your soul mm. to receive the free things of God. I love all my kids the same, but I'm not giving my 11-year-old the keys to my car. No. Nope. Because she doesn't honor or understand what it means to sit behind a wheel wow. and to govern that. Wow. God loves all of us the same. Most of us are not conditioned internally to receive everything. Wow. Prayer, fasting, prioritizing schedule, it honors the free gift of yes, God yes, so yes. that it comes and it imparts to you and you can steward it in your life. Friend, this is what God wants for you. And it goes back to Billy's question, what do you want? Yes. I just want to pray for you as we close out this season and as you go on the journey of the end times. Feed on it, sit before it. And it's okay to go on a journey. I've sat in passages forever. I didn't get it. And these faces of God, of God, I don't understand you in this. It, it, we're, we're on a journey. Yes. And we're transformed in time. And we I, just want to stay with it. I am just so uh, excited about the possibilities of you getting might in your inner man. Yes. And might to stand. You know, we started this season saying, first season. It was faith to contend. Second season, in the knowledge of God, faith to behold. Third season, in intimacy, faith to receive. And this season has been about faith to stand with might in our inner man. And so these things we're giving you, the things Corey's saying, the things I'm saying right now, this is what's going to get that strength, that root system on the inside of you that you can have faith to stand. Jesus. And that's what the earth needs right now, a people with might in their inner man standing fearlessly for Jesus. Amen. Lord, I just pray. I thank you for these wonderful men and women. Yes. God. The mark of God and them tracking with us during this whole season. Father, I pray that you would put your seal on them. Yes. I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation <sighs> in the knowledge of Jesus Christ to rest upon them. <sighs> I pray for eyes to be open. I pray for according to the riches sure, of your glory that you would strengthen them with might through your spirit in their inner man, that they would comprehend the dimensions of the love of God yes. and that they would be filled with the fullness of God. Father, I pray that you would raise up messengers in this hour. What you did with your servant, David, I pray for that atmosphere and that realm. Remember David in these days, God, and mark a generation with that same longing. Yes. I won't rest until God rests in yes. my generation. 
Father, I ask you to seal this this season, yes. mark everyone by it. And God, I pray that every word would go deep and that it would bring forth a harvest in the nations. Yes. God, we bless the nations. Yes. And we end with Psalm 2, verse 7 and 8. Ask of me and yes. I will give nations. God, I ask you for the grip podcast that it would go into all the earth. God, I thank you, Lord. I pray for the nations of the earth. Yes. God, I thank you, God, for Slovakia. I thank you for Germany. Thank you for Greece. I thank you for Europe. I thank you for North America. I yes. thank you for South America. I thank you for the islands. I thank you for yes, Asia. Yes, God, I thank yes, you for the Middle yes, East. I yes, thank you for Australia. Yes. God, I pray, God, for India. God, I pray for Africa. God, I pray that you would release an explosion Shh. in the nations. Explode, God. <sighs> Explode in Brazil. Yes. Explode in Africa, God. Explode across South America. God, explode across the United States. We're asking Jesus that you would have the reward for your suffering. Yes. God, use this to grip hearts. Shalabata. Fill them with might by your spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless Amen. you. We God love bless you. you guys. We love you.